Ken Burton here with Woodcraft Magazine. I'm going to talk to you today about this dining chair I have here. This is a chair that Ellen Caspern and I designed for a chair making class we taught in Warren, Vermont at a place called Yestermar. It's also featured in issue 109 of Woodcraft Magazine. That's the October, November 2022 issue. It's a really nice chair, very comfortable. The woodwork's pretty straightforward. But what I want to show you today is about this upholstery. It's very comfortable and pretty easy to do. It's made from cotton webbing and it's stapled right onto the frame. So let's take a look at how that's done. To get started, you're going to want to have your chair frame finished. I put three coats of General Finishes Armor Seal finish on this. You're also going to need a handful of basic tools and supplies. This includes a staple gun, tape measure, a pair of scissors, and the cotton webbing. So this is the webbing I used. It's available from a company called Country Brook Design. They're based in Alabama, but they have a great website and you can order right from there. So I opted to go with a cotton product. I like the natural fiber and seems to be in keeping with the chair. They also make some synthetics. The cotton webbing is available in six or eight different colors. So this is inch and a half wide and Today we're going to be using green. As you can see, I put some towels down to protect the chair from the bench surface. Now I need to determine the length of the pieces that run from side to side across the seat. I'm going to stretch this, or extend it across, and I want it to go around the rail and up to the surface on the inside. I'm going to pull it across. Don't need to pull real tight, but snug. And up the inside of the other rail. You can hold that, mark it with my thumb. And then I want to add approximately an inch for folding. Cut this off. Double check it. And we should be good with that. So the next step, I've cut the nine pieces I need for the side to side weaving. I've got the chair turned up on its side. I'm going to take my first piece, I'm going to fold its end over approximately half an inch and lay it in place on the inside of the rail. And I'm going to staple it. One, two, and three. I'm going to do the same process in the middle and at the front. With the front, middle, and back straps attached, I'm going to take and set the chair upright. Now, the back one goes down comes around and across. Now I want to pull it tight and I can use my fingers to help keep that tight. So now I've got it pinched here and put that little fold in. And then I can tip Come in here with my staple gun. And I'll do the same thing with the middle one. With all the cross pieces in place, and the reason you put the outside ones and then the middle one on first is it gives you a chance to do, get the spacing right for the ones that fill in in between. And it's just kind of by eye. These are approximately 3 16 to a quarter inch apart. 
Now I need to determine the length of the pieces that run from the back rail to the front rail. So the front to back pieces get stapled to the underside of the back rail. They wrap around. And then they go across the seat. They would actually weave through here, but we're not ready to weave yet. And then when they get to the front rail, they go down across the front and they'll come up the inside and get stapled on the inside of the front rail. So I've cut the 11 pieces I need that'll run from the back rail to the front rail. And I'm gonna staple, I'm gonna start with the two at the outside, one in the middle, just like I did before, because that'll let me get the spacing right across the way. So I'm gonna take my first piece and do the little fold, place it on the underside of the back rail. Notice that I've got the chair upside down. Hold it and staple it. I'm going to do the one on the far side. So to start the weaving, I'm going to bring this one up and around the back rail. It's going to start by going over top of the rearmost cross piece. And then it's over, over, under, over, under, and so on, all the way across. The next one, same thing, up and around. Now this one's going to start by going under. Now I need to attach the webbing to the front rail. I'm going to start with the middle piece and kind of work the slack out of it and pull and just keep tension on it. Then when I wrap it around the front rail, I can squeeze with my left hand and hold the tension and get that fold in so I can staple it off. Now the middle ones are going to, there's a ear, the middle ones are going to have more slack in them. So the fold's going to be more, if you have to, you can actually cut some of that material away. I think I'll be all right with this. I'm going to sneak the staple gun in. And now I'm going to work, move to the outside. I'm going to pull the slack out. And do the little fold. I'll do the other outside one. Pinch to maintain pressure. And then I can distribute the other ones with a little bit of space between them in between. So 
So one of the reasons I'm pulling this so tight now is over time the webbing will stretch a little bit. And so you want to have it as tight as possible now so that as it does stretch and becomes a little looser, it doesn't get so loose that it looks um, floppy. And we can start on the back. With the seat done, next thing we do, need to do is to add the pieces for the back. I'm going to start with the side to side ones. These are going to be the longest ones we're going to cut because they're going to start on the back of the back. And this is actually a little bit different than what it shows in the magazine. There I started on the side, um, but I think after thinking about it, I think it's going to look better if it starts on the back. They wrap around like so, and then all the way across, and then they have to wrap around here, around the front, and then around to the back here. So I've turned the chair upside down. And I'm going to staple the back pieces to the first leg, a little fold over, and aligned with the underside of the rail. This one's going to align with the top of the bottom rail. And the last one goes in between. With the three side to side pieces for the back in place, let me show you how these wrap. They're going to go completely around the leg. Come cover up the staples and then extend across to the other leg. So Attaching the web to the other leg is a little trickier because as this comes across and wraps around, we need to flip it up, put a little twist in here, and then a reverse twist because I don't want it twisted ultimately. But then it wraps around and I work the tension into it and align this with the top of the back, top of the bottom back rail. Got my little fold in there. And I'm gonna staple it off. So now I can, I need to work this twist back out of it. So I'm gonna pull it down. And sometimes it helps if you have a flathead screwdriver, you can, kind of ease that over with this. Now because of all that twisting, this piece probably is not going to be as tight as the ones, the cross pieces on the seat. That's okay. As we weave the vertical pieces in, that slack will get taken up. For the second piece, the one at the top of the back, it's going to come across. So that piece wants to wrap, but I'm going to put that twist in so it twists down and then it twists back up so that I can cover up the staples. So here I am at the back side of the leg. I can put my little fold in. So pinching it to hold it tight. Fire a staple in here, make sure it's lined up with the bottom of the top rail. So I've kind of flipped the twist out of it and now can work this one up and cover up the staples on the back. We're almost done. We just need to add the vertical pieces in the back. These are going to be fairly short, but to get them to the right length, we need to measure. These are going to start on the underside of the back rail. They're going to wrap 
So the long end goes forward and it wraps completely around the back rail. So it's going to cover up those staples. And then it's going to come around the top rail, get folded and stapled to the underside of the top rail. These staples on the underside of the top rail are really the only ones that are going to be remotely visible when the chair is done. I'm going to need 11 of these and then we can staple them in place and have a seat. All right, like before, I'm going to do the two out, I'm going to staple the two outside ones and the middle ones first. So I've got my little fold. Because of the curvature, I just want to see what the spacing looks like. So I'm, and it's pretty much the same as the other ones, about 3 16 inch in between the pieces. So before we can weave the back of the seat, I want to show you from this angle how these wrap. They're going to go completely around the rail and work the slack out. And then I'll be wrapping around the top rail. So I have all the pieces wrapped around the bottom rail the way they should be, that complete turn. And now I'm going to start to weave them through the back. The outside ones start by going over the first thing. So I'm going to pull down, give a little tension on it. It's going to go over, under, over. Then the next one is going to go under, over, under. So having woven the entire seat back, I'm going to turn the chair upside down and then I can staple off these pieces on the underside of the top rail. So having woven the seat back, I can now staple these off just like the other times. I'm going to do the two outside ones in the middle first. Pull on these to make them taut. Now here, because this is semi-visible, I want to be fairly careful to try to get the crease in these um, in the web right up against the back side of the rail. So there you have it. How to weave a chair seat with cotton webbing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it shows you what you need to know to make your own chairs. I'm Ken Burton with Woodcraft Magazine. Thanks for watching.